Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. In this episode we're going to be setting up a tool setter as part of the homing routine. And for that I'll be using this block of aluminium. So at present my axis behaves like this when homing. And I want to change it to behave like this. Now there are two prerequisites you need to sort out on your machine before installing your tool setter block. And the first one is mandatory, and that's homing. If you don't home your machine, Maso will not be able to find where your tool setter block is located on your machine. If you haven't set up homing, check out this video here where I take you through how to set up homing on Maso. The second one is optional, though I recommend you do it before doing the tool setter block, and that's setting up your soft limits. If you decide later on down the track when setting up soft limits to change your coordinate system, then you've got to go back through and change all your tool setter values as well. If you do the soft limits first, then you're not going to have this problem. If you haven't set up soft limits, check out this video where I take you through an easy method for setting up your soft limits on Maso. And with that sorted, let's move on to the tool setter block. So your touch of block can be as simple or as complex as you like. So this is what I use. It's a piece of aluminium block. It's 75 millimeters square, or about three inches. All I did is draw a hole in the side. I take the cable that comes from Maso for the touch off tool setter and plug it in. There you have one tool setter block. It's nice and heavy. It'll sit wherever I put it. You can get a bit more complex if you like. I can have something like this here. Again, I plug my cable from Maso into it and now I've got a spring loaded touch off point this has the advantage that the tool comes down and I've done something stupid like haven't plugged my cable in then I've got a chance I can hit that e-stop uh, and, and stop the tool from being broken because I forgot to plug my cable in this is not so forgiving and if you've got a fine tipped tool like a, a v-bit uh, you can break the tip off it we can do something as simple as what I did for my rotary axis. For my rotary axis, I simply installed this aluminium plate on top, and I can use this here as the tool setter when I plug my tool setter input into it. So whether you decide you want to go simple or complex, what does the tool setter actually do? When you home your machine at the completion of the homing of the axes, Maso then seeks out the tool setter block and it will touch the tool off on that. This creates an offset, which Maso can then use to calculate all future tool lengths. When you're machining a project and an M06 command comes up in your G-code, Maso will wait for you to change the tool, and at the completion of that change, you'll hit the cycle start. Maso will then go to the tool setter block, it will touch off, and it will automatically set that z uh, tool length for you you don't need to worry about doing all that but here is the number one rule when using the auto tool zero and the tool setter block after homing the machine never change a tool unless instructed to do so by Maso if you must change your tool and you haven't been instructed to do so by Maso then either do it before you hone the machine or if you've already honed the machine home it again immediately afterwards to get that new tool length offset. Otherwise, every tool change you make after the first one will be wrong and your part will not machine properly. I cannot stress how important it is that you follow that particular procedure. So how do we wire our touch block up to Maso? Well, really, it couldn't be simpler. We start by connecting a 5.6K ohm resistor between the positive of the Maso power supply and our chosen input that we'll be using for our tool setter. Next, we run a wire from that same input and connect it to our tool setter block. Lastly, we need to connect the cutter to Maso ground. This can be done by running a wire from the negative of the Maso power supply and connecting it directly to the cutter using a crocodile clip or alternatively you can run a wire from the negative of the Maso power supply and connect it to the chassis of your machine. So long as your machine is not insulated between the cutter and the chassis 
then this will effectively ground your cutter for you. Now next we need to configure a tool setter input. We're going to start by going to the F1 screen and I'm going to double click on input 1. I'll scroll down the list until I find tool setter input and I'll double click on that. Now it's important that you use the tool setter input. Do not use probing input. The probing signal input is a completely different input and used for something entirely different. You must use the tool setter input for this. So if we take a quick look at our tool setter input here, you can see that it's currently set high. Now that's because we have it tied to the positive rail of Maso. I'm going to highlight the input one and press the space bar to invert. Now you can see, with the input inverted, we now have a status of low. Next, I'm going to test my tool setter block and make sure it's all wired up properly. I'm going to tap it against the cutter here and keep an eye on the F1 screen. When I tap it against the cutter, it should change from low to high. Low to high. So now we have to make a decision. Where are we going to put our touch-off block? It's important that we go somewhere that's repeatable. If you're going to attach it to the machine, no problem, but mine's portable. Uh, and I'm going to put mine right here. There's a little lip that it can sit against here, and I'm going to get it into the corner here. So next we now need to find the center of this block. We need to know the machine coordinate of this block. So make sure that your machine has already been homed, otherwise the coordinates you get from it will be worthless. And I'm just going to jog my axis around like so until I get to the center of my block. And that looks pretty good. If we now take a quick look at the machine coordinates on the machine, I can see that I have a z-axis setting uh, a machine coordinate of about 95 millimeters and a an x-axis coordinate of about 33. The z-axis one I need to take the z to the very top here and I can read four millimeters for the top so I'm going to remember those settings because we're going to use those next for setting up the auto zero function. To do that we go into the F1 screen double click on auto tool zero and click enable auto tool zero feature for the X position I'm going to enter the 33 millimeters and check the enable box for the Y axis I'm going to enter my 95 millimeters that I read off the DRO and check the enable box for the Z safe distance I'm going to enter a figure of minus 20 millimeters what that Z-safe distance is, is the distance I can allow my Z-axis to wrap it down to before it starts probing for the tool setter block. You need to take into account the longest tool you'll be using. Bear in mind it is a machine coordinate and not a working coordinate. Lastly, we have our Z tool zero feed rate. And I'm going to set mine to 300. That's the speed at which it will seek out the tool setter end. If you make it too fast, you'll end up crashing into the block. If you make it too slow, it'll just take forever. So try and find a uh, value that works for you. Lastly, I click Save. And that's that done. Next, I'm going to go into the Tool Changer, double click on that, and select Manual Tool Changer. Now, this is going to give us the position where we want to change our tool. It doesn't need to be the same position as the tool setter block. It can be anywhere on the table. But for my convenience, I'm just going to make it the same position. And the first value there is the Z height. And I'm going to make that 4 millimeters. So if I enter 4 millimeters, I'll check Enable on that. And why I've chosen 4 millimeters is that is the top of my axis travel. Again, it's a machine coordinate. I want to raise the Z axis up as high as it can possibly go to make sure that when the 
spindle is traveling to my tool change position I'm not going to run anything like clamps or knock into my work for the X and Y position I'll just click enable on those as well and I'm going to enter the same coordinates as I had for the tool changer so X will be 33 and Y will be 95 click save click save again and I'm all set up so the next thing to do is to give it a test if we've done everything right it will home our X Y and Z axis and then move to the tool setter plate and touch our tool off on it So the final test I want to run is a tool change test. I'm going to issue a instruction in MDI of T1M06. Tool 1 being the tool that I want to change to and the M06 being the instruction to actually go and change the tool. So what will happen is the I'll put the axis just at a random spot on the table here and the Z axis will rise up to the top. Once it's reached the top, it will then move over to above my touch-off plate, which is where I designated the tool change should take place. If you've designated somewhere else, then it will move to that location. Once I'm happy the tool change is made, and I don't actually need to change the tool, all I have to do is push the cycle start. It will then probe down, touch off this plate. Once it touches the plate, it'll rise up and move back to the location it started from. Now that the tool's in the tool change position, I can change tools and when I'm ready, I can hit cycle start. And there you are, you are now the proud owner of your own Auto Tool Zero tool setting block. And that's where I'm going to leave this episode of Hope You Enjoyed It, maybe learn something new. All that remains for me to do is to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that bell so that you get notification of all new episodes when they're released. In the meantime, cheers.